Hello everyone, my name is Pritam and you are watching Tech with Pri. Welcome to my channel and I'm back with another tech video. Now this is the 18th video of this tutorial series called Cloud Computing with Microsoft Azure. Now in my last video, we have understood the concept of Azure Firewall and also have shown you step by step how you can configure the Azure Firewall in your Azure platform or from your Azure portal. So if you missed that exciting video, guys, uh, please go ahead and check the video. The link will be there in the description. And also you can find the link right now here on your screen. So now enough of networking. Now in today's video, we are going to learn about some new service of Azure that is the storage service. Now storage is one of the popular in Azure. Now you can understand that storage is something that we use on daily basis. It could be our phone storage. It could be our online storage like cloud storage, Google Drive or OneDrive. So now today we are going to see that how Azure is providing us the storage services. So we will create our storage service, our storage account first, and we will see what are the different options that is available. And at the same time, I will also show you how you can add or upload, you know, your pictures or like, you know, anything in the storage. So let's go to the Azure portal and create our storage account. Now here I am in my Azure portal. Now, before creating the storage account, I want to tell you that uh, Azure provides us four type of storage mainly. The first one and the popular one is the blob storage. So blob storage is uh, unstructured data full of, and it could be like anything. You can upload picture, you could upload a PDF file, you could upload video file. So you could upload any kind of thing. And it's a large amount of storage which is available, which is Azure providing. Now in blob storage, uh, we generally use blob storage uh, like in, in live scenario like probably you have if you have a web application and you want to stream videos from your storage account you can do that with the help of the blob storage and also some other stuffs like uh, maintaining and storing the uh, files uh, storing the large files and kind of things you can use azure blob the next type of storage that azure provides that's the file storage and that's the common file storage like the windows that we have windows file storage i mean the uh, drive that we have so in cases like where uh, virtual machines, three, four virtual machines are using the same storage account or like same kind of a store that can be configured with the help of the file storage. Okay. Now, next type of storage, and also we, you can use Azure file storage with the help, you know, when you store the logs file, we have seen how we want to store logs and data uh, from the Azure monitor. And we have seen the, uh, there was a storage account that created by default in that time. So it was also a file storage. Now, Next type of storage is the queue storage. In queue storage, you can store large number of messages here. Now, it's basically like when you want to use something in an application. So it's like you want to store something, some backlogs or something. So you can use that. And finally, you, we have finally we have the uh, Azure table. So it's the NoSQL data that is providing. And by table, you can understand it's related to database. So uh, Azure table is generally related with the Azure Cosmos database. That is a uh, Azure's famous database that Azure provides. So it is used to store the NoSQL data and things. So these are the four services that Azure provides. Now, enough of the understanding. Let's go to the portal and create our first storage account. So now before creating our storage account, uh, you know that I always love to put stuff in a single resource group. So let's create a resource group for our storage account. So I'll click on the resource group and I'm gonna click on create resource group. So let's create our storage resource group. So let's give it a name as AZ storage. And uh, let me choose the location. Let's choose Central US and let's create the storage uh, resource group. This is not, it's not a storage account. This is just a resource group, you know. And now uh, in this storage account, we are going to uh, put our storage account. So to create a storage account, you can just start search for storage here. And you can see you will have storage accounts. Now here you can click on create to create a new storage account. Now here under the resource group, I'm gonna choose our new resource group that is AZ storage. And now the storage account name must be unique. So it should be like uh, unique for any other storage account that is available on Azure. So let's give it as storage one, two, three, probably root taken, yeah. So, okay, so here we go, storage 871 that is available. And let's choose the same region. So we want our uh, all the resource should be in the same region. So here it is. 
now uh, the performance so in based on the performance azure recommends to use the standard one it's the case of the most scenarios so previously in azure like the environment mean, the design has quite a bit changed the options so previously it was the general purpose v2 account which was very popular and in the most cases like when you use the applications web app and all io applications and many other things you use the standard one so you can use the standard one here recommended and you, you can also the premium one if you want low latency services so generally the standard one is the uh, perfect one for you now here we have very very important concept of redundancy guys so we have four options here if i just click on this here so we have local redundant storage that is the lrs uh, lrs is the uh, the most cost effective one it means that if you choose lrs then your storage accounts uh, will be replicated uh, three copy of your storage account will be replicated in a same data center so in a same data center okay so now uh, three copy of data will be there in the same data center but it would be in a different different rack so if any rack get fails then your storage account would be safe no need to worry then uh, if i just keep the grs so we have zrs that is the zone redundant storage now here zone redundant storage means you understand like your data would be your copy of data would be copy in a one data center and also another data center in two data center right and three copy of data so total six copies of the of your data or six copies of your data will be stored in a two different data center so why because if you have a data center level failure if you if the data center fails for some reason then you can choose the uh, then your data would be safe because you are in the zone redundant storage okay so it is uh, a bit costly than local redundant storage then we have the most popular one that that's the geo redundant storage grs so here you can choose geo redundant storage if your data like if you want protection from a region level of failure so if you choose geo redundant storage then your data would be copied in a region also in another region okay the paired region so for an example if you put your data in the uh, maybe central india then your data another copy of your data will be stored in the west india region okay so two different region to stop the uh, to protect your data from region level failure and that is costly for sure you can understand you are getting much more protection here now the last type of that we have that is the zone geo zone redundant storage or gzrs which is like you can use that for getting the both the facility of geo redundant storage and the zone if you want that kind of protection you can use that and you can understand that is costly and uh, that is all about the redundancy next we can move to the advanced tab now we have few options here that is by default uh, azure has uh, selected for an example like you can uh, you know secure transfer you can have with the rest api that is fine next enable infrastructure encryption now in azure in storage account it's already encrypted azure, azure is providing so if you want a second level of uh, encryption you can click on this checkbox for me it's fine now uh, then we have the enable public access block public access that is okay and the storage account to key access now that is very very important we will learn about the storage keys how key uh, keys are very very important you will understand and how important it is so we will cover that in the next video when we will learn about the further about the storage account next we have the uh, default to azure directory now this is this is by default is not checked but you can check it so if you check that then every time someone wants to access your storage account it needs to be authenticated in the azure active directory that we are going to learn later about aad now uh, under under that we have the minimum tls version that is 1.2 the latest one that's fine make sure you have selected the latest version next we have the data lake storage generation 2 now this is something that we are not going to configure or doing something now because this is something for the big data analytics so i have a plan to upload videos on this later so we will talk about that then so let it be there under the blob storage section uh, let's choose the default option we are not configuring any nfs and uh, allow cross tenant replication now that is that is very important again we will learn about the tenant in the azure active directory video next we have the access tier now this is very very important access tier now if you want to use your data frequently then you have to choose the option hot tier which is cost effective also now if you want to store data for a long time and if you want to use that uh, maybe you want to use that later so then in that cases you can use cool storage like the backup scenarios where you store backup data and you want you don't want to use that data uh, up to 3 to 6 months maybe once in a 3 months or 6 months in such cases you can use cool cool storage uh, cool access tier 
now azure is charging high for cool uh, storage because uh, it is storing a lot of data for you now uh, there is an option called azure files for a large type of files so something like that and we have the table and queues so you can configure that uh, keys for that but we are not going anything of this so next we'll moving to the network now that is very very important also we will do some networking in our next video also uh, so this is how so this is the place where you can tell azure that uh, from where or the places from where your azure account would be available to access now uh, public endpoint is from the all networks so it is available it would be available for all networks by default uh, now public endpoint selected networks if i choose that see it is giving me option to select a particular virtual network and your storage account would be accessible in this particular virtual network only so i will show you a demo of this in the next video for sure and uh, there, there is a private endpoint concept now you can create a private endpoint here and you can choose a particular resource group particular subscription or region from where your uh, data can be accessible okay so this private endpoint it's if you want to secure your azure services uh, you know in a in a in a bigger way like for an example you can also configure subnet private dns or something like that okay so i don't want that for the time being public endpoint it's fine and next we have the network routing now the, here you are deciding how your traffic moves from your account to the, your storage account from azure to your storage account now by default microsoft recommends the microsoft network routing which is by default and which is safe and secure to use okay let it be there and we don't want internet routing uh, it sounds like not safe kind of thing next we move to the data protection now here you are deciding a few things which is very very important and one of them is the soft delete now uh, if you by chance delete something from your blob storage uh, you it, it, it would be stored under this soft delete for uh, seven days you can see and which is very very important because uh, that's that you should enable that because by mistake anything can happen and same available soft delete for containers so containers is nothing but uh, i mean while creating blob storage we need to use the container so it's also called container storage and for also for file shares okay so this is done we don't want tracking so we have almost configured our storage account let's go to the next uh, we are not co covering any tax thing let's review and create so here we go your storage account is created successfully so I'll go to the go to resource section and this is our storage account and this is the overview tab. You can see all the options that you have chosen all the configuration here. And uh, now let's quickly show you in the Azure storage store some files. So I will go to the data storage under that. You can see I've talked about already this four, the blob or the containers. Next we have the file shares, queues and tables. So let's go to the containers. And here we need to create a container under that we will store our image so let's give it a name like my container and next okay you cannot choose a purchase letter here it's fine uh, choose the access level now here by default it is the private so let's choose is the container level so it will give the read access for containers uh, and the blob and then let's create it no need to go to the advanced option so our container is created successfully my container and i will go there and i'll upload maybe an image click on the upload button and here you can simply add files so let me add an image let's click on upload and the image will be uploaded in your new storage account and it's done this is all about creating storage account guys and this is very very important for az104 administrator examination and uh, in further videos we'll learn about how you can use the network things and uh, now you now we know network now we can have network in our storage account and how security keys are work how our access keys are work okay so this is it for today guys if you find it helpful then go ahead and hit the like button if you have any doubt come to the comment section and please share this video with your friends and families so that it can reach out to many people see you in the next video bye bye take care